Hello, welcome back to Becky Bakes. Today I'm going to make shortbread biscuits and this is something that's been requested by several people so I'll give you a bit of science as we go through it as well. So in my mixing bowl I've got 125 grams of unsalted butter which is very very soft. It's been out of the fridge all night. You can use margarine if you want to. Margarine gives you a slightly different texture. It makes your biscuits a bit more crispy rather than crumbly. And if your margarine is straight out of the fridge, you can simply mix it round with your spoon and it will soften. If you're going to use butter and it's hard, for goodness sake, don't put it in the microwave because it will turn to oil in the middle. If you want to use butter and it's hard, cut it up into little tiny pieces, put it in the bowl and give it a good stiff mix with um, a firm spoon. So you can see mine is very, very soft. And to that, I'm going to add caster sugar. And I'm going to put in 50 grams of caster sugar. And we work that in first, so it's creaming. Some shortbreads are made by rubbing in. And sometimes that doesn't work terribly well. This is a safer way, it's a more reliable way of making your shortbread. There we are, that's well mixed. A little bit paler than it was. Now we add the flour, 175 grams of plain flour, and it can be gluten free. Now this is where it gets technical. The reason that this is called shortbread is because each of the flour grains gets coated in the fat, whether it's butter or margarine, and it's done quite quickly. I know it seems to be taking a while to mix, but by comparison with things like bread dough and pasta, this is actually quite a quick mix. If you are making bread or pasta, you need that for a very, very long time. And that allows the molecules of gluten to join together and get very long. And that's what makes your bread dough very elastic. In this mixture, we're doing it quite quickly. So the gluten doesn't have a chance for the molecules to, to lengthen into long strands. And so they, they're short strands, and that's why this is called shortbread. And it's why short cross pastry is called that, because it's short strands of gluten, simply because you mix fairly quickly and you don't over knead it. That's why if people make hard pastry, if you're not a very good pastry maker, your pastry is always hard, it's probably because you're overworking it and allowing the strands of gluten to get very long. So we'll just clean that off and I need to just make sure I've got all the butter mixed in and then I'm going to squeeze it together. I'm not going to knead it. I'm simply going to squeeze this into a ball of dough. Now it looks as though it's beginning to clump together. So the next thing to do is put my hand in and squeeze it. Clean off the spoon and then just bring it together gently. You don't want it squishing between your fingers. Gentle pressure and use the dough to pick up the pieces in the bottom of the bowl. So by the time you're finished, there'll be nothing much in the bowl. It's all on your, in your lump of dough. So just gently, and there it is. Oops, just a soft ball of dough. Right, now we're going to roll this on the work surface, so I need to get rid of my bowl and my mat. Right, now there's the bowl of dough. I need a little bit of flour on the work surface, so I've put some extra in a bowl, and any that I don't use I can put back into the flour bag later. At this point you need to put the oven on, gas mark 4, 180 degrees Celsius, 160 fan, and you're going to probably need two baking trays covered with greaseproof or silicon um, liner. And you need to work out which cutters you're going to use. I've got a selection and I've got some favourites. I like ones that are rounded rather than things that have lots of points. Now, things like this are wonderful. They're very graphic. Children love them. But lots and lots of points come with a degree of jeopardy because you know, the legs fall off, to be honest with you, because it's such a short mixture. It doesn't stick together very well, and you may lose legs. So watch out if you decide to use something that's quite intricate. Instead, 
it's always safer to go with the rounded shape. So there's a chick and a rabbit. And a star, a small star is okay. You'll probably manage something like that. But be very careful of the snowflake type cutters. So I'm going to use my daisy because it's my favourite. And when you use it, make sure that you press down on the edge that's been turned over. The other edge is sharp, so get it the right way up, for goodness sake. Right, I'm going to put a little bit of flour on the top of my dough, and I'm going to start to roll it. Favourite phrase, you are not a steamroller. Very gentle pressure. And to begin with, you can turn it, but it will get so big that you won't be able to. And the chances are you'll make somewhere between 20 and 30 biscuits depending on the size of your cutter. So if they're all the same, that's fine, but if you've got two different shapes, put all the little ones together and all the bigger ones together on separate baking trays. So a little bit of pressure, it gradually gets a bit bigger and we're aiming, oh, see what happens? A bit of flour on there. Let's put some more on the top. And we can flour the rolling pin as well to make sure it's quite a warm day, so it's quite sticky. Right, there we are, let's get back to this. We're aiming for a dough that is the thickness of a pound coin. Now when you make pastry, you never roll sideways because it, it puts uneven pressure on the pastry, but I'm afraid we're gonna to have to, so sideways rolling is okay for this. Keep an eye on it in case it's getting sticky patches. And I think we're probably there. So, thickness of a pound coin. Got my trays ready. Sharp side of the cutter. And be careful how you place the cutter. Try and get them as close together as you can because the ones that you cut first will be the best. So you want to get as many as you can first time round. And if they stay stuck to the table, that's fine. Doesn't matter. Leave them there. And we'll screw up all the bits later and re-roll it. Oops, one's come out, so that can go on the tray. If you're working with a child, you might have to just help them work out where to put the cutter next, especially if it's got complicated shapes. And it may be that you have to turn the cutter, not upside down obviously, but, but round by 180 degrees. Now, if they're stuck to the table, you need a pallet knife. It's very, very bendy. Um, painters use them to put oil on canvas, and because we've realised that painters know what they're doing, we've taken them into the kitchen. So I can get four in a row. They will not spread. And because I'm going to get quite a lot, I need to have them quite close together. So... When you use your palette knife, press it right down so it's absolutely flat on the work surface. And you just have to kind of scrape the biscuit off. So I've now got to screw this up, avoid any big patches of flour, give it a bit of a squeeze, warm it in your hands to help absorb any flour that's on there, and then you might need a little bit more on the table. stick you can just flatten it out and make it into just a little round one so you don't waste it there we are now um how many have we got three six nine twelve one two three four five four so twenty thirty two thirty three four thirty five thirty five and a half out of that and they'll cook in the oven for sort of 10 to 15 minutes depends how big they are if they're quite small you're likely to be nearer to the 10 minutes maybe 12 and if they're much, much bigger, if you've gone with, let's say, a Harry Potter castle, it could take anything up to nearly 18 to 20 minutes. But you're looking for them to be golden brown with a slightly darker tinge around the edge. 
So we'll get these in the oven. Now the first tray is done. I'll just move the second ones up. While they're still hot, you need to sprinkle them with sugar. And there are two ways of doing this. Use a spoon like this and tap the spoon and a little bit will, will fall off. And what happens is the steam from the biscuit starts to dissolve the sugar so it makes it stick. Oh, my sugar's a bit damp. So you can do it like that. Or if you've got one of these things, this is a sugar caster and these were invented in the 17th century when people stopped having their sugar in blocks, the rich could afford to have it ground smaller and so they needed a way of sprinkling it and they invented this container with a, a series of holes along the top and you can see that actually that's a really efficient way of doing it. So a sugar caster for your caster sugar or just off the end of your spoon. Now leave them to cool and then um, put them into a tin, an airtight tin. Well, I hope you enjoy having a go at this. It's another reliable recipe from Becky Bakes. Um, have a go, send us a photograph, like, share, subscribe. See you next time.